There is a world just beyond now where reality rides a razor-thin seam between fact and possibility. Where the laws of the present collide with the crimes of tomorrow. Patrolling these vast outlands is a new breed of lawman. Guarding the fringes of society's frontiers, known simply as... Tony Van Doni. Hello, this is Truth With Tony, and um, last night during the live stream, we got completely cut off and I've been banned from all social media, so I have decided to jump on my cousin's channel here. Uh, thank you for that, J. Harvey Lewis. Uh, we have some very important truth that we have to cover today about the earthquakes that have been happening out in the West Coast. So, it is July 9th, 2019, and I'm recording this at approximately 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, if you don't know what you're looking at, this is a program called Earthquake 3D Live. And um, as you can see, just over 48 hours ago, we had a gigantic 7.1 earthquake in Southern California. It's a very serious situation. Those of you who think I'm kidding, I'm not. We're going to get into that later. But first, you're probably wondering, why is this happening? We have three theories, one of which I'm going to debunk. So the first theory is by a very, very intelligent man called Dutch Sense, and I suggest that you subscribe to his channel. He's got a lot of important information to stay up to date in this situation. So stay tuned to see what his theory is on why much of these events are happening. Here's a, here's a mining operation, right? They've got mining going on there, but in the mining they also have oil and gas. So if they're doing all kinds of stuff here. Now it keeps going, this oil pumping operation, where all these little pads are. And it just keeps going and going and going. Here's more right here. And now we're getting pretty close to the earthquake, aren't we? So we're right next to it. We've got a volcano or a series of volcanoes. Heaps Mountain, East Cedar, and Cedar Mountain. Let's go look at Cedar Mountain and these again. Look at the lava flows on these ancient. The tuftage is still on top. The black basalt is still exposed. But the oil pumping operation also is right next to it. So, oh, and by the way, this thing goes into overdrive gangbusters. I mean, as if this isn't already a lot, right? I mean, you see how many hundreds of them there are. These aren't houses. Everyone's in oil well. But then we go right across here. It goes into gangbusters overdrive. Look at this. You see how many there are? Every one of them oil. And some of them have like two and three wells at the pad. It's not like it's just one. So now do you see it? And it just goes on and on and on. And on. I'm not against oil and gas. I'm not. But when you've got this many perforation points, it's going to draw. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. These are all. I just showed you what, like three or four counties across right here alone that's drilled out. Every one of these little white dots here across the mountain ranges and through the fields and valleys. And I mean, it doesn't stop. I mean, it quite literally goes through all the mountain ranges. Can you see? Okay, I mean, so I'm kind of digressing here a little bit, but we've got to talk about it because we get back over and look at the earthquakes and it's mimicking where the oil pumping operations are. And I just looked up the southern one here. This northern one goes right into that pumping operation. They're diagonal from each other. So Yellowstone's magma chamber is getting displaced on the edge of the Craton. Two oil pumping operations right next to each other. Again, one down here by the volcanoes, the other right up in that massive thing I just showed you. Over here in Nevada, we're next to a volcano. Yeah, oh boy, oh boy, I hope this takes me somewhere else than where I think it's going to take me. Please, I don't want to have to talk about this. I really, I got enough problems already, I, I don't need any. Oh uh, yeah, okay, well here we are, I got to talk about it. We are right on the north side of the Hanford Nuclear Processing Facility. This here is a very famous location. We saw a series of earthquakes break out around here. Going back, I want to say like two or three years ago, a earthquake swarm, a little small series of earthquakes broke out around here. I made note on it, made a video, showed everybody, showed the nuclear processing facility here, showed the LIGO gravity wave sensor station here. You guys don't know about that. These are long lasers that go out in each direction. They're housed, of course, and they use this to detect gravity waves. They have it pointed in the direction of all the heavy material that's being stored here. These are experimental reactors. So an earthquake swarm broke out around here. I made note of it, made a video, then guess what happened? A tunnel collapsed, and in the tunnel, it was then exposed to the air where a bunch of uranium million shavings in each rail car. And it was exposed, it blew out a little bit, they had to evacuate the whole facility, they had to go in and clean it up, and... Well, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, that's where we're at. This is it. This is where we are at. We are at the Hanford Nuclear Waste Facility. And then the other earthquake, the other 1.1, is quite literally south by southwest of this. Well, south by southwest of this puts us right here on the edge of the facility itself. So, our volcanoes, our nuclear storage site, are getting hit in the northwest. The 
Teton Edge and the Yellowstone Magma Chamber is now moving. The pumping operations across Utah are now moving. Some people might wonder, well, what about this one? I mean, if this is a swarm at a volcano, and this is a swarm at a volcano, and these are getting hit at pumping operations, and we're swarming over to the east at pumping operations, then what about the swarm in Northwest California that's standing up off the globe here? Well, let's go look it up. Geysers, California. So, Geysers, California. I wonder what's there. Anybody have any ideas what could be at Geysers, California? There's a volcano at this location called Clear Lake. It's Clear Lake Volcanic Field in Geyser Peak. Now, you'll see these pipelines. Don't worry, this isn't oil. Well, I shouldn't say don't worry. Here we have geothermal pumping operations where humans are injecting sewage, human wastewater, down into the volcano here, which is Clear Lake Volcanic Field, to get the sewage to steam off. Come up and turn the turbines. I made a SHTF joke about that last week. Well, I'm not joking tonight. Look at what we're looking at, guys. We've got ourselves a stack of earthquakes back at Geyser Peak. We have a stack of earthquakes significant up at Mount Hood. Next to it, Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier moving and the nuclear waste storage facilities. Yellowstone swarming. Super volcano hit down at Long Valley. Big swarm. Let's go back down and show you where the big swarm is. If you're just now tuning in, you don't know. The big swarm is going from up here at Cozo Volcanic Field and Devil's Kitchen geothermal pumping operation where they drilled into the volcano here. Going from there, past Volcano Peak with its 15 separate eruptive points and a line going down here where a fissure has formed extending from basically right here down to here. Should we carry on? Should I show you the rest of these locations or would you believe me if I told you that this location here, this location here, this location here, this location here are all directly next to pumping operations. We jump over to the east. <laughs> Good look. So I can prove it to you. Let's do that. Let's go look up the 2.4, 1.5, 1.0, 1.4. Prove to you that each one of these is directly at or next to a pumping operation. Once we get over to the east-southeast, we go down along what's called the San Jacinto Fault and the North Imperial. Or you could call this also the South San Andreas going into the Imperial Fault down to the south. But first things first, let's prove our case. All these smaller earthquakes. See Grapevine, California? There's something right next to Grapevine. Of course, they're doing grapes here. That's for California wine country. But look what else is right next to the Grapevine location. Do you see all these little pads that are set out here into the fields? This isn't for pumping water. It's for oil and gas. And they go right down through out into the desert where we have more oil and gas pumping. And that is small. Even though there's just hundreds of drill points here going through the fields and out into the desert, that's way small compared to what's right next to this. Do you see where it says Taft, California? I'm going to zoom in and you'll start to see that these mountains look a little bright. Look like they've been kind of caught away. This whole mountain range here looks like it's been scraped away. You zoom in, it looks like sand dunes. But then you zoom in some more and you find out those aren't sand dunes. Every distinct portion here, every one of these little black dots is a different oil well. Then you begin to understand how many different drill points are here. This is just one little mountain range. Believe it or not, this is a lot, right? I mean, that's huge. But right next to it, it gets so densely packed that when you zoom in, they look like ants on the ground. Now, do you think it's why? Oh, Missouri Triangle is the name, by the way. How ironic. But here is the San Andreas. This diagonal line goes up into the Bay Area and comes down to the south and goes so close. I mean, we're talking a few miles where they just have it mega drilled all the way right up to the edge. Look at this. And the San Andreas is right here. This is the San Andreas right here. So they drilled right up to it, right on the other side of the mountains. That's like three miles. Okay, so our earthquake striking right down here in the middle of the pumping operation. I just proved it to you. Same with the 1.5. Pull the coordinates on the 1.5. It's just a different location triangulated from Grapevine. Put the coordinates in. So drill points are weak points. Volcanoes are weak points. Both are weak points. Here's the earthquake coordinates. And lo and behold, you see this? Here we are, back to more oil and gas. And we're right, I mean, we're like a mile down the here's more right here. And they creep up to right here. Maybe even further, but I, I mean, this is a definitive well right. This is not for water pumping. People tried to tell me it was water pumping. I had to go look up all the wells, get all the permit numbers. Waste of time. I'm like, dude, it's an oil pumping hour. Okay, let's go further down to the east, southeast. Show you what's here. See Santa Clara, Clarita? I must mispronounce that. Hey, you know what? That wouldn't be a would not be a first for me in California, would it? Ocotillo, 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 California. Look where we're. Oh, that's down further south. I just can't pronounce it ever. Here's the earthquake epicenter. Look what we have right behind these houses. So we have some awesome brand new. Or not, maybe not brand new, but they look like awesome houses. Right behind the awesome houses, look what we have. 
We have another oil and gas pumping operation. Absolutely massive. We might even be able to get a street level view on this one. I don't know. Let's see. No, it's going to be up on the top of those hills. People here are oblivious. Driving by, they don't even know. Up there above that hill, you got yourself a large oil and gas pumping operation. Right there. And it goes down here to the south, so it doesn't just... Ooh, oh, wow. Hold on. We've got geothermal here. Look at this. Looks like we got some geothermal there, too. What more do we have here? Look at these. Wow. We even have more. I'm surprised I didn't know that they went down that far. I'm wondering if there's some over here, too. And I'm just not catching them all. Now, I look within 6 to 10 miles. That's like a half mile. So, big oil pumping operation. So, this one, this one, this one, I've already proved now. This one here is on the San Andreas. No pumping operation there. But what about this 1.4 over in East L.A.? La Mirada, California. Go put coordinates in. La Mirada. You also notice the Glen Avon swarm stopped again. Now, Glen Avon was just getting hit yesterday. Started to hit back up again. Wonder why. We talked about this. Okay, take a look where we are. I think it's pretty obvious. You see what's just to the east? Let's get a line measurement tool on this to show you how far it is. Again, I always look 6 to 10 miles. We are 8 miles to the center of this oil pumping operation where it says oil wells here. I'm going to tell you a little story in a second, but... Nice golf course. Look at that. We got ourselves a golf course here. You could go hit the back nine and, you know, bounce it off the oil well and get over there. It's Happy Gilmore comes in. Big flame shooting up out of there like Fred Flintstone's quarry. Okay, so pumping operation, pumping operation, pumping operation, pumping operation. All right. Where are we? We're right next to the Acid Pit Gold Mine, the 1937 oil drill point where they went drilling for oil. Found a little bit of oil and gas, but not enough to do any kind of real extraction. But what they did find was large amounts of gold. By 1950s, they're dumping 35 million gallons of acid in the ground here. The company, the Raytheon and General Electric, McDonnell Douglas, all teaming together to dump their industrial acids here of all places. So why would they dump a bunch of acid in the ground? What do they use to break apart the rock from the, from the flakes of gold in Africa? What is that stuff called? Oh, it's industrial acid? So they just magically dump the acid here by chance, right? That's what the story was. Just mysteriously dumped here and big problem, super fun site. So of course it makes sense that they need to put a quarry in here to extract the toxic stuff and get it out of there. You know, do a little, uh, do a little quarry in there where they dump the acid and where Kosanke did the drilling and found the gold. It's all just a big coincidence. And the earthquake striking next to there, surely that's a coincidence too. Because the drill points that were done in 1937, when they were capped off with wood plugs down 500 feet, three bags of concrete on top of the wood plug, and then just fill it with dirt, that that might give way over time. Okay, we're going to end this really quick, because what I'm showing you is that every location that I just showed you, either it's an oil pumping operation, a volcano, or a geothermal pumping operation, there's only a few fault zones that are being hit. That's the creeping section of the San Andreas. But look where the earthquake comes in right next to the Sultan Buttes. Smithsonian marked, and right on the edge of them, look what we have. More drill points. All these pipelines go out to drill points that go down a few hundred to a few thousand feet, where they again inject water to steam it off to get steam for the turbines. And the turbines are all over the place here. Huge, right? That's where we stop. That's where the earthquake stop. So let's recap. Where do we start? We start up here to the north, Mount St. Helens volcano. Then we go down here to Mount Hood with the big stack at the volcano there nuclear storage site if yeah, we don't really know what's going on there but over to the east magma chamber for yellowstone is getting hit we jump down into northern california geysers clear lake volcano is getting hit we go down to the east southeast this stack of earthquakes here this goes right into long valley caldera that's what that is the super volcano we only have these right here going on the actual creeping section of the san andreas then we get down here drill point drill point drill point drill point drill point a diagonal line and of course the huge stack that's right over at cyril's valley and cyril's valley is nothing more than a volcanic center meeting along two well-known faults tie it all together what does it mean it oh and then we recap with the oil and gas pumping operations getting hit across utah Oklahoma, and texas and then these over here to the east over in nevada that's the stack here takes us right over into a nuclear test site that's the stack and the 0 0.8 so let me prove that to you See, we're 43 kilometers east-southeast of Beatty, Nevada, Beatty, Nevada. And I've shown it a thousand times, but I want you to see it. Now, they're not doing nuke tests there now. It's just a human-made fault zone location, if you will. Just like the drill points, actually. So here we are. See where it says Skull Mountain Volcanic Buttes? We'll back this out ever so slightly. You see this valley of craters? Every crater is a different underground nuke test site. 
and U.S. nuke Operation Bitterly just randomly clicked on here. June 12, 1964, just a half kiloton. But you can clearly see, I mean, there's so many. Here's Doomtown that was blown away off the surface. Our nuke test sites extend over to the west and up to the north, where we get into the megaton test sites. And that then wraps this up. So recapping one more time. Volcano after volcano after volcano are being hit. Geothermal fields, man-made drill points that are inside of these volcanoes are getting hit. Oil and gas all the way over to the Midwest are getting hit. And the big swarm in Southern California still taking place. We're looking for up to a 7.5 to 7.6 in Southern California by the night of the 11th or sooner. If we get to the night of the 11th and it does not hit, I would have expected this to fully float across the plate going over to the Midwest United States. Now that you get that that's all going on, you know what to prepare for. A large earthquake, and we wait for this to go over to the Midwest very soon. Okay? Do not be scared. You need to be prepared. What we typically see before large seismic activity occurs is a drop and an absence of magnitude 5 earthquakes. The duration of this period very much depends on the condition of Earth's crust. But typically from the moment of critical geometry, larger seismic activity occurs within two and a half, three days. We know the 7.1 in California yesterday followed on the lunar peak on the 4th. And this peak was the reason for an earthquake warning with a focus on July 6th. And that was early on the 6th at 3.19 UTC. In case you missed the previous videos, I already showed the critical geometry, planetary geometry coming up on July 8th. If we look at the SSGI graph for the coming week, we see this planetary geometry peaking 20 on the index on July 8 and 9, and we see two lunar peaks, one just following those planetary peaks, and further down the road on the 14th, we see another lunar peak, 14 on the index. And we can already see that there is a high potential for seismic unrest throughout the week. So let's have a look at the planetary geometry, because this looks exceptionally critical, and it certainly doesn't happen very often. And what we see is that there are six alignments, and they all occur within 24 hours. So there is a high convergence here on the 8th and 9th, and that makes it really, really critical. We also see that Mercury is involved in four out of the six alignments and that Earth is involved in two. The most critical by far is Earth, Mercury, Mars, tomorrow night, 22-7 UTC. We are practically dealing with a quintuple alignment with Venus, the Sun, Mercury and Jupiter between 1300 hours and 1900 hours, roughly. Then Earth lines up with Mercury and Mars. This alignment is already close, which may be the reason for the seismic lull that we have entered after the seven-pointer, of course not counting the aftershocks. And then we see another alignment involving the nearly quadruple alignment as Mercury, Sun, Venus early on the 9th, and then Earth again lines up with the Sun and Saturn also on the 9th at 1654. The fact that these planetary alignments occur within 24 hours makes it really, really critical. And also because Mercury is involved not just with Earth and Mars, but also with the Sun, Venus and Jupiter. So let's have a look at the solar system here. We see how critical this situation actually is or is going to be because Venus, Sun, Mercury and Jupiter are about to line up. So we go to July 8th and we see that indeed Venus, Sun, Mercury and Jupiter are practically in a quadruple alignment. That is pretty, pretty rare in itself. But at the same time, we see that Earth is in an alignment with Mercury and Mars. On top of that, we see that Earth is also closely aligned to the Sun and Saturn. Back to the Earth-Mercury-Mars alignment, there is a history with these three planets. We've seen that in 1960 with the largest earthquake on the record, the 9.5, Mars-Mercury-Uranus in an alignment. Then four years later, Alaska 9.2, Mars-Mercury-Uranus in an alignment. Another example, more recently in 2017, and we go to September, people from Mexico already know what I'm going to point out. On the second, we see that Earth was also in an alignment with Mercury and Mars. There was more going on at the time because Earth also came into an alignment with the Sun and Neptune. There was a lot going on at the time. There was a lot of solar activity as well. And then a couple of days later, my estimate at the time was 6, 7 September, a large earthquake. It was actually a day later on September 8, magnitude 8.1 in Mexico. So you can see why I'm very concerned about the current situation where Earth is again going to line up with Mercury and Mars, while Mars, sorry, while Mercury is also in a quadruple alignment with Venus, Sun and Jupiter. It makes it highly critical, which means that from July 8 to 11, there can be large seismic activity. It can be mid to high 7, but it can also go well over 8 magnitude. Again, it very much depends on the condition of Earth's crust. So be on watch, especially if you are in an earthquake prone area. If you are in a subduction zone area, you have to be on extra alert. And again, don't be duped by the seismic lull that precedes the large seismic activity. Usually when Earth enters critical geometry like this, we first enter a seismic lull, typically marked by the absence of magnitude 5, mid to high 5 magnitude, and then suddenly you can have this seismic increase. Be safe everyone, until next time. Thank you very much, d 3 anum Please everybody, subscribe to that wonderful channel. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm your host, Tony. And right now, we have explored 
two incredible theories on why these earthquakes are happening in such massive array. A spectrum that many of us have never witnessed before. There remains one primary theory about why these earthquakes are happening. And I'm going to explore it and debunk it to the best of my ability. So, first of all, people have been looking up at the stars for millennia. And sometimes what they see is a little disturbing and very difficult to understand. Have you ever been out there and you saw some stuff that made you wanna, that made you wanna go run back in the house? Perhaps you've seen patterns in the sky. Witness accounts of unidentified flying objects. These are actual UFOs. If I was looking up at the sky, I would be a little bit creeped out though. I mean, come on. These things seem to be flying in some kind of a formation. They don't even seem to be too concerned about what it is that might be watching them. You know, you gotta factor in all the millions of military jets worldwide and the United Nations, they have to be watching this kind of thing. Why don't they want the public to know what this is? What is it that the aliens have in their possession that makes all of the governments of the world so terrified about confronting this issue and making it public. So these scenes that you're watching, this is no CGI involved. I can guarantee you that I've actually been studying UFOs for the last 25 years. I know you just look at me like I'm Tony, and I am your Uncle Tony, but I'm also very, very well researched about this topic. You can see these things uh, started out just a couple of them and they seem to be expanding You got to think about all the volcanoes happening around the world and then look They all converge they are flying um, They are flying together you've got so many more of them coming out from nowhere. They must be coming from another planet This is absolutely terrifying. It looks like hell on earth. What are these things? And then look you have another unidentified flying object right over there possibly observing what is that a military craft I see the blinking lights it looks like a headlight in the sky I don't like it a flying saucer definitely there's something else flying around here these things have unimaginable speeds these things did you see how fast they went through the frame we're talking about hundreds of miles in milliseconds I don't think we have a jet in this nation that's capable of flying that fast well, at least not making those kinds of turns. It would kill any pilot with all the G-forces. Now look at these things. They're getting closer. The people down on the ground are terrified. What would you do if you were in this situation? And as you look on, these things, jellyfish-like UFOs, orbs, creatures of the night, they seem to be something much worse fire descending on mankind but wait but wait there's always hope there's always hope and i want you to remember that next time somebody tells you some creepy conspiracy you gotta dig for the facts this seems like a hopeless situation but i'm gonna explain to you why this is easy to debunk after you have a little bit of knowledge at your disposal so actually my cousin J. Javi Lewis, who has this channel, God bless him. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. He sent me some footage. I just played this in reverse to make a point. This is actually a Chinese Lantern Festival happening. Okay, my cousin, J. Javi Lewis, actually taped this. The ones before was somebody else. Somebody out in Minnesota, in New Jersey. Maybe they had too much coffee to drink. The point is, Every year, people all over Taiwan launch these lanterns with positive messages, wishes for good things to happen in the year, such as, but not limited to, maintaining the independence from the PRC. Now, this is an incredibly positive time, but you see how it can be interpreted as something evil in a certain situation. I'm not saying UFOs don't exist, and I'm not saying they aren't a threat. The point is, don't always believe everything you hear. 
However, we did cover some interesting points today, and I definitely want you to make that go viral because they're doing too much fracking and too much drilling on these fault lines. Whose fault is that? Of course, it's the fault of the drillers. They're making money. I understand. I like to have money too. That's why I sell cars. If you want a new car, call me, call Uncle Tony. But back to the topic. Drilling out there, all over the fault lines, they can't be done anymore. People have to get smart about not causing earthquakes. It's common sense. It's one plus one. It's two times eleven. It's easy. Simple math. Now, I don't know if the sun and all of the planets being aligned, I don't know if we can actually blame them. We could try to uh, contact them. But I think that uh, I think that our best bet is to deal with the things that we can and to ignore the things that we can't. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. It will really help my dearest cousin out. And I'm going to try to have some more news updates like this for you guys because my cousin's really busy with his Nature Hub thing. I don't know what he's doing, to be honest. It's some app. I'm trying to figure it out. I just got a smartphone. I've had a flip phone for years. It worked for me. Finally, I accidentally dropped in the toilet. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. This was a great live stream. I appreciate all your comments. I see over there, Stefan, Elizabeth, John. I appreciate every one of you making these crazy comments in the chat. Okay? Okay. Have a good night. God bless. Your Uncle Tony loves you. Till next time.